Today I'm going to make a trivet for my wood stove. <clears throat> Got this piece of aluminum plate. It's 3 eighths thick. And uh, just on like a scrap I had left over from my, <clears throat> my Rong Fu uh, mod that I did a couple months ago. So I dikemed it up. It's almost dry. And uh, I'm just going to find the center. I think I can fit a, a 7 inch diameter in this. So let's see how we do here. Alright, so sun is going to be right about there. So I'll punch a hole and cut out a 7 inch disc on the van saw. You'll see why I put that center punch divot in there when I stick it on the lathe face plate. That's going to allow me to center it up. The reason I'm making this is, uh, you know, wouldn't you figure we hit the hole, huh? The reason I'm making this is because I put a kettle on my wood stove and uh... Alright, so let's see. If I move this thing... Let's try that. Perfect. Alright, there's the circle we're going to cut out on the bandsaw. And then we're going to mount this thing to the faceplate and uh, get it around. So stand by and uh, I got some cutting to do here. Okay, so a quick five minutes on the bandsaw, we get this thing rough cut. So, um, yeah, I can stick this thing on my rotary table. I could, you know, try to bandsaw it out <clears throat> a little better. But um, what I'm going to do is stick this thing on my faceplate with double stick tape. And um, turn it. Cause what the heck man, I got a lathe, you know? So um, I'm going to um, get this thing mounted up and then uh, I'll show you what I did. Stand by. Okay, you can see what I did here. This thing has to be spaced off the face plate a little bit. So I stuck some parallels on there with double sided tape. I got some other double sided tape here. So now she's ready to mount on the plate. See at the lathe. All right, she's mounted on there. You can see the spacing between the face plate, which will allow me to put a nice radius on it. And you can see why I put the center point in there because now it's centered up. It's friction drive, but if I take light cuts, it ought to be fine. It's not running out horrible. That's uh, 195 RPM, which is probably a good RPM to I'll actually probably turn this at about 100 just to be safe. So, um, let's get started. Now, <clears throat> we're making progress. We're still in an interrupted cut here, but 
she's doing it. I'm gonna try to uh, show you a cut here while I'm holding this. So this is uh, 150 RPM with uh, 10 thousandths cut, and it's uh, it's interrupted, so you got to be careful here. In case any of you were wondering how much the diameter of 12 by 36 lathe can cut, this is about it. <laughs> Maybe a little bigger, but... Alright, so you can see this is going to be a tedious process. In hindsight, I might have put this on my rotary table, but we're here now, so I won't uh, bore you with the multiple cuts that I will make. But uh, we'll get back to you when this thing is around. Well, it's almost round. We got about another hundred thou to go. A little spot right there, and, and of course my little drill hole. <clears throat> so, um, yep, we'll just keep going here. Hundred thou more. Well, it's a pretty good day, so I figured I'd run the engine a little bit. But you know something? I've been thinking about this thing. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> part of the art of machining is to not only figure out how to cut metal, but how to do it in the right order. And after thinking about this overnight, I mean, I almost got this thing around. And with this, you know, little divot, I gotta get out of it over here. But I was thinking about this, and, you know, I said, if I um, put the legs on first, then I can, uh, you know, stick this thing in the chuck basically and uh, turn it, turn it that way, and I have to do the faceplate turning. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to um, mount this thing on the rotary table and drill three holes in it where I want the legs to go. And then I'm going to make the legs and press them in, and they will be pressed in. Probably about a one thousandth interference fit on a half inch pin, aluminum to aluminum. And then I'm going to uh, grip those three legs in my six jaw chuck because they should line right up with the jaws. And then I should be able to turn, you know, a nice radius on the outside of it and stuff. So, you know, there's multiple ways you can do things, but I think I was doing it the stupid way at first. I think um, this way here will be uh, a lot better. So, uh, change plans, but um, still the same project. Um, Got to mount the rotary table in the mill and uh, get that all set up. And then uh, we'll drill three holes. This thing's about nine inches, nine, nine and a half inches in diameter, or actually, no, memory serves me right, it's about seven inches in diameter, so I'll put them on like a six inch bolt circle or something like that, and, um, you know, see how that works out. <clears throat> well, the old Fairbanks has got a pretty good head of steam up now. It's running like a top. Gotta love that spark we know. In any case, while that's been going, I've got the rotary table mounted up, centered up underneath the spindle, got the uh, plate centered up on the rotary table, i got to uh, still clamp it down 
which is going to be kind of a problem because there's really not much place to clamp there. But we'll get it. So uh, when I get this thing ready to drill some holes, we'll show you some, some holes. Well, she's up to a nice rolling boil. The good old iron. Alright, I'm gonna shut her off. She's a happy camper. I love it. All right, back to the project at hand. So I needed a centering point. Um, it's just a 60 degree uh, uh, bevel I put on this piece of coal roll. There's nothing special about this steel. Um, I use this on my mill to center up stuff in in the, uh, in the points, <clears throat> but uh, because it's mild steel, it's been dulling down. So figured I'd uh, try to harden it up a bit. So in this can right here, I got just a bunch of old, dirty engine oil, lots of carbon in it, <clears throat> and uh, I'm just going to use this torch here to heat it up. And uh, I got a magnet over here that, uh, that will uh, tell me when it becomes uh, non-magnetic. So what I'll do is uh, heat this thing up till it's non-magnetic and um, quench it in the oil. Hopefully some carbon will go in there, case harden it a little bit. And then, uh, you know, maybe I might temper it. I got to see, but anyways... Uh, just a little, little detour from the uh, from the project. Okay, plan B. I don't think that torch got hot enough, so let me get the old heat wrench out and uh, we'll try it again. Alright, let's see how the uh, see how the oxygen uh, acetylene heat wrench works on this. Oh yeah, she's getting red now. Probably not going to be able to see this too good in the sun, but it is uh, getting cherry red at this point.
Oh, it's getting less magnetic. There's still a little bit there, but... Okay, here we go. Yeehaw! Alright, so, pretty sure that's damn hard now, but we'll polish it up and uh, we'll see how she does. Hang on, let me get this cooled down a little. Alright, so, we got this thing uh, cleaned up so we'll be able to see the colors. Just threw it on a wire wheel and then uh, on, a, uh, on a scotch bright wheel. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I hope you can see these colors, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this thing up until it turns a straw color. And I'm just going to quench it in uh, some water I got in my engine here. So, uh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Alright, that should do it. First part of that was hardening, second part was tempering. I think I went a little blue, but it's alright. So that should hold up a lot better than the soft uh, state. I, this was 1018. Um, you know, like I said, just, just a pointer I used to uh, center up on uh, center punches in the mill. So hopefully that'll last a little longer than the uh, soft version of it. Okay, so I drilled three holes in this thing on my rotary table at 120 degrees around using a 3 8 drill bit. I'm going to get my pin gauges here and the holes ended up being about a thousand over the 376. So, got a piece of uh, 5 8 aluminum in the chuck here and I'm going to turn it down to about 370. 8-ish and then check. I want a little bit of a press fit. Nothing has to be crazy here, but so we'll just turn out some legs. And uh once we get them pressed into the plate, then we'll be able to grip it in the chuck and finish turning the OD. So that's the plan. Well, got three legs made. Pressed them in. They're sitting a little proud so I can face them off flush. And it's in the chuck. So now you can see why I said I was doing this the stupid way because I think this will work out a lot better. So, turn the OD face off the face. And uh, this baby's done.
so much better. So much more rigid. This is the way to go. Don't have to worry about crashing into the faceplate. Got no spacers in there. <clears throat> Doing about a hundred RPM, ten thousandths cuts. Getting there. Just taking a few thou off the face of it to make it all pretty, and then we'll be done. comes the, the legs that are a little bit proud about just a few thou so we have a heavier interrupted cut here yep. kind of see why I wanted to make this thing because uh, sitting the kettle right on the top of the stove kind of does a job on the paint um, you now this stove's uh, well, got to be getting close to 18 years old so it's not too bad but hopefully that's going to keep things from getting more wrecked. Project complete.